So this is a ball screw, and this is a lead screw. Ball screws are one of those components that get hyped up a lot, and for good reason. They're incredible marvels of engineering. They're easier to set up than a lead screw, have less backlash to tune for, and transfer of torque way more smoothly than most lead screws do. So why, oh why, am I going to be using lead screws instead of ball screws in my personal build? Whenever you start a new engineering project, you've got to set yourself some limitations. The one that's important today has to do with this bad boy. This is an open build spec C-beam. They make up the majority of the frame of all versions of Milo that we've released so far, and they have a lot of upsides. They're relatively cheap, easy to source, have some features that make it really easy to bolt to them, and they're decently rigid for what they are. The most important feature has to do with the C-channel itself though. We use this as a space to house the screws that transfer the rotational motion of stepper motors into the linear motion of the axes. And it comes with a few big advantages. It makes it easy to design way covers for that stop chips from entering the channel and clogging the screws. The threads at the end of the extrusions give us a good spot to bolt bearing blocks to. And the two raised sections are great spots for mounting linear rails, which the axes then ride on. But because they're off the shelf parts, they also come with a few disadvantages that we can't change. The space that we have to work with in these are very limited. It's about 40 millimeters wide inside the channel, so whatever parts we need to fit inside there need to be able to fit within that 40 millimeter width. That's perfectly fine for a lot of sizes of lead screws that are available, but can be an issue for ball screws. Ball screws typically come with a flange nut which bolts to the axes that they're supposed to drive, but the typical size ball screws used in hobby machines have flanges that are way too big to fit inside the 40 millimeter width that we talked about earlier. In the past, people have modded these to fit in Milo by grinding down the flanges to fit inside the C-beams, but that introduces its own problems. If any of that grinding dust gets inside the screw, it'll wear the internals down very rapidly. They're typically made of a hardened or stainless steel, which is very hard to grind in the first place, and because we tried to keep tools needed to build our machines limited to hand tools and maybe a drill, a grinder was out of the question. The ball screws we ended up using are 0802s, which means that they have a diameter of 8mm and a lead of 2mm. Remember those numbers because they'll be important later. One of the requirements for the build was to choose lead screws of the same diameter as the ball screws, so that the only parts that are different between the two configurations of machine are the ball screws or lead screws and a single printed assembly. Everything else stays the same so that the end user can decide what they want. This is partly to do with the price difference between ball screws and lead screws. If the end user has enough money to spend on ball screws and wants the features that they provide, then that's great. If they don't need the features they provide, then they can choose the easier to source and cheaper lead screws that also have one major advantage that we'll get to in a bit. The lead screws we decided to use are TR8 by 8 and are pretty typical in the 3D printing space. Like the ball screws, they have a diameter of 8mm, but their lead is 8mm instead of 2mm like the ball screws had. You can source higher lead 8mm ball screws, of course, but they're typically way more expensive, and at that point, you may as well just have bought a Tormac or converted a manual cast iron machine. So we have the ball screws for our ballers, and we have our lead screws that are cheaper, but worse. Except they aren't. You've always got to take words like more efficient and better with a grain of salt in engineering, because better usually just means better under a very specific set of conditions. And the word efficient is a comparative metric, which means that it needs two separate metrics that are being compared to each other in order to work. For example, if you're building a really lightweight gantry for a 3D printer with CNC machine parts, you can say that those parts are very structurally efficient because they maintain a good level of stability with the least amount of material. But you can also say that they're very material inefficient, since most of the material that came from the original stock that they were milled from was wasted in the machining process. And when talking about components and assemblies in these better or worse ways, you often lose out a lot on the nuance and mitigations that designers have thought about already. For example, one of the ways I described ball screws at the very beginning of this video was that they have much less backlash to tune for, which is a very true statement. But the operative word here is to tune. 
With an appropriate anti-backlash system, lead screws have a near identical backlash to ball screws. In fact, in our testing, lead screws with our anti-backlash nuts are within margin of error of the ball screws. So that's one major drawback of lead screws that's already been accounted for. So let's talk about some more. Ball screws are often considered more accurate. But this is a false statement that so many people believe because they don't understand the mechanics at hand. The only thing that dictates resolution of an axis is the resolution of the stepper motor and the lead of the screw. If both lead screws and ball screws have the same lead, then they have the same resolution. But what about the setup that I described earlier, where the lead screw had a larger lead than the ball screw? Well, then yes, on paper, the ball screw has a finer resolution. But you then need to ask yourself this, do you need that resolution? With a 1.8 degree stepper and a TR8 by 8 lead screw, you get a resolution of 0.04 millimeters per full step. And with a 0802 ball screw and the same motor, you get a resolution of 0.01 millimeter per full step. Under ideal conditions, mind you. Is that 0.03 millimeter difference worth the increase in cost for you? And if that answer is yes, then that's fine. If it meets your requirements, go for it. But there's one last thing, however, that I would like you to consider, and that's the rigidity of the machine that you're using. Compared to a 3D printer, Milo is extremely rigid, but compared to other mills, it's an order of magnitude times less heavy and less rigid. And does that make it a worse machine? No, it just means that you have to change the strategy you use when making parts with it. Instead of having slow feed rates and heavy cuts like you would typically have on a big CNC, you need to shift your strategy to high feed machining. By lowering the depth of cut and width of cut, you can also lower the amount of force that is impacting the tool. If you keep all other parameters the same, this cut will then take longer. So to compensate, you can feed faster. In testing with single flutes, with both lead screws and ball screws, we found the performance to be good enough on both platforms. But you could often get away with much faster cycle times for the same part when using TR8 lead screws. Whenever you increase flute count on your tools though, you have to also increase your feed rate by the appropriate amount to maintain the same chip load. Chip load is a topic for another video, so I won't get too far into it now, but just know that it's really important. If you go from a single flute to a three flute, you have to triple the feed rate to compensate for it. You can also get away with lowering the RPM, but again, that's a discussion for another video. So if you want to get the benefits of running three flutes, you need to be able to feed the tool quicker to maintain the same chip load. And steppers can only spin so fast before they lose effective torque and begin to lose steps. Because the lead is four times greater on a TR8 lead screw compared to the ball screws, you can feed four times faster for the same motor RPM on paper. In reality, it's closer to 3.5 times faster because of losses due to friction, but that's negligible compared to the advantages. I know it sounds like I'm bashing on ball screws here, but I'm really not. Ball screws have their place. In fact, we're going to be using them on Atlas, which starts development later this year, because we believe it's a more appropriate time to use them on bigger machines where you can fit ball screws with higher leads. And even on Milo, they have their advantages. They need less maintenance, don't need to have an anti-backlash setup, and are easier to install overall. My point is more that you should always consider all the facts. Understand what the intentions the designers had when designing machines, so that you can make better informed decisions. Don't just trust words like better or more efficient. Find out what better suits your needs and build the machine that you want, and not the machine with the most buzzwords in it. For me, that means sticking with lead screws on my Milo. For you, that might mean ball screws. But that's up to you to decide. This has been Jake, signing off.